A very warm welcome to you all. You've clicked on this video link or the thumbnail has attracted your attention because you want to know, is the Garmin race predictor true or false? Stick along to the very end where we can conclude after some detailed analysis of is the Garmin race predictor true or false? But in the meantime, if you do enjoy this video, please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe because it really does help promote the joy of running across here on the YouTubes. So, so yes, lots of us have got Garmin's. I've got this particular model here, which I've had for nearly, ooh, is it coming up to four years now? Or is it three years? I can't remember the exact date, but it's a Garmin Phoenix 5 Sapphire. And the latest Garmin's, the, especially the Phoenix series, and then there's all sorts of others, you're looking at normal retail price, a lot of money, upwards of £500, $500. Some are even over £1,000, $1,000 from what I've seen. So you've paid a lot of money, so you'd expect the tech to work. So I don't know if you've discovered that depending on what kind of watch you have, and this is not just on Garmin's, but other watches as well. I have heard that Chorus have this feature as well, is a race predictor. And isn't that a really good feature to give you an idea based on your current level of fitness that this Garmin is monitoring and tracking, that uh, you can have a look and see how good are our Garmin race predictors. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Check your Garmin race predictor and leave it in the comments how your predictor compares to your current personal bests if you've run in those distances. And the Garmin race predictor does show four distances, which is 5K, 10K, half marathon, and marathon. So leave it in the comments below how it compares. I will be going through those of my own personal ones later towards the end there. So keep watching and I'll go through that this isn't the only way of predicting the race because there are other factors that we need to engage with. If you have been watching my channel for a number of months now, or years, however long it's been, you will know recently I did republish a video because a lot of people have been commenting, especially the regular subscribers, that VO2 max isn't the be all and end all of how how good our fitness and how our running will be there are three factors that we need to look into which is VO2 max lactate threshold and also running economy now our smart watches or maybe not so smart depending on how you look at it does show a measurement for our VO2 max and also looks at our lactate threshold and works that out based on our heart rate, speeds, and so on and so forth. So it does take that into account. So how accurate is the race predictor? Well, it's quite a way off for me, and I'll go through the details as, show, as I said uh, towards the end, but the big factor, big, big factor, and there is small print within the, the Garmin website as well, saying that um, it's only an indication, should only be taken as guidance. It's not gospel or whatever, but, um, but yeah, Call me whatever, but I'm thinking if I've spent close to a thousand pounds on a technical bit of item, I'd like it to work. A bit like if I go into a coffee shop and I spend four or five pounds on an expensive piece of coffee and it doesn't taste like good coffee. Yeah, I'd want my money back. But anyway, that aside, the biggest factor which I don't think these smartwatches take into account is running economy. And that is how effective our body is at converting oxygen and through our body and convert that to energy. I don't think these smartwatches can measure that. And I will conclude that because when I go through the details and hopefully you've left it in the comments below, how your race predictor on your smartwatch compares to your actual PBs. So let me go through in detail, um, distance by distance, the times on the race predictor and what my current PBs are and the differences. Yeah, let's do that now. So before anyone thinks I've committed all of this to memory, I have written it down and I have my uh, notes here. So I don't make this up as I go along yet. Yeah? So if you are new here, a lot of time and preparation goes into these videos. May not be lots of glossy stills and music and all that stuff, but it's all pretty factual. So here are the facts based on what my watch tells me, what my current PBs are and the differences. So we'll start off with the 5K. The predicted race predictor says 17 minutes and two seconds. Now my current personal best at 5K is 18 minutes and 18 seconds. And that was completed, well, over two years ago, nearly three years ago. Yeah, so 
maybe I would have got a bit slow when I'm getting older, but the difference there is one minute and 17 seconds. Now to a lot of people who may not know as much as some of our regular subscribers, that may not sound as much, but in 5K times when you're looking at around 17, 18 minutes, one minute and 17 seconds is, yeah, a long way off. So that's the 5K. So the 10K race predictor said 35 minutes and 20 seconds. My current PB, is 37 minutes and 52 seconds so that's two minutes and 32 seconds off again in my opinion that kind of difference is almost not quite a country mile we're coming on to a country mile soon when we talk about the half marathon predictions but you can see there's a consistent it's it's out of kilter so to speak yeah how do your predictions compare so far leave it in the comments below half marathon distance yes this is where it's starting to get really juicy so half marathon race predictor is one hour 18 minutes and four seconds yeah i would so love to be able to do that right now yeah <laughs> but my pb from this year which was at the cambridge half marathon is one hour 23 minutes and 46 seconds so that's a whopping five minutes and 42 seconds out yeah now that is a country mile out yeah that is like yeah you're you're in the distance we're gone it is way out how's yours comparing so far so marathon distance yeah stick along to the very end where i'm going to give you some uh, conclusions of all this but yeah the race predictor time two hours 43 minutes and 12 seconds my current pb which was in chicago although manchester this year was only about 30 seconds off but my current pb from uh, almost over three years ago is three hours six minutes and five seconds so that is a whopping 22 minutes and 53 seconds out that's almost 23 minutes out which as you know around the three hour mark well it's it's not even a prediction is it really yeah so let me give you my summary and also i'd like to hear from you of what all this means to us all after all that what does all this mean to us all yeah what does it mean to us all well in my opinion diddly squat yeah if you've been following my channel for many months and years you will know my ethos is whilst i wear this on every run because i want to record every run and it's great for gps distances geography and, and also monitoring how my fitness um, in terms of running particular distances how that compares and obviously it goes on to Strava because obviously if it's not on Strava it didn't happen did it but uh, so there's lots of pluses but for me I do not use I'm not a slave to tech whilst I'm from a tech background and I've worked in tech for over four decades um, I believe tech is there to help us and guide us but not to be a slave to and I think you know for those of you out there who are using these watches and monitoring it for this that and the other great if it works for you fantastic as i mentioned i'd love to hear from you in the comments below how does your race predictor time compare to your actual pbs or your current times yeah i'd love to hear from you on that but i'd also love to hear from you for me it's about running on feel and i think for a lot of athletes who are slaves to this are really selling themselves short in my opinion and it is just my opinion i'd love to hear from your opinion as well are they selling themselves short go on feel i've seen so many athletes where they suddenly ditch being a slave to this because sometimes even the gps is not working if you're close to water features like i'm near a river right now or in wooded areas or high-rise buildings the gps does not work so if you're doing split times and you're working to a particular pace and you're expecting this thing to tell you the pace then it could be out yeah i'm not saying it, it's always out as i get my little flies flying around here in this lovely summer's day oh gosh <laughs> yeah the joys of uh, recording live eh but uh, i won't edit that out just so you know it is real because i like to keep it real are they selling them short yeah people work into these are we selling ourselves short i run on feel i know a lot of you regular subscribers do as well and are achieving some amazing times what can i conclude well it is just for guidance and also it's a bit of fun I'm sure I've read somewhere and I might have to do a bit of digging that uh, 
it is just a bit of fun really and a bit of guidance with the uh, tech but if you ever see people using this and I'd love to see if anyone's race predictor matches their actual real times or is it actually underestimating it for you because that could be the other side is it underestimating the actual times that uh, you can do so whatever it's doing you can almost say well cast it to one side and uh, work on what you do because the only real time that works is the actual time that you're doing it in so when we're doing races and i've seen people debate the differences as i digress a little <laughs> with arguing whether their strava time the garmin time is different to the actual race time the race distances is based on your chip time and uh, and the distance is measured correctly not by gps but by a measured meter so it is true yeah so the only times i can go with is the actual race times not race predictors on that so thank you so much for watching that is it on this particular one i may do some more on the the tech how it's working not working and how it can benefit you because i do love so many features on this but that race predictor my word you know salt pinches take with come to up come to mind Thank you for watching. Please do share with all your friends and family as I'm sure they'd all like to know are their race predictors good, bad or indifferent. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you at the next video very, very soon. I thought I'd add a little addendum because I did say stick to the very end, yeah? The addendum here is there are some folks who will say maybe this race predictor is what we'll be doing in a year or two's time or three years yeah which is lovely positive and all that kind of stuff yeah but the thing to bear in mind is when you continue to do consistent training for another year or two your fitness will improve so guess what happens with the race predictor that'll get quicker yeah <laughs> Yeah, if it's monitoring your fitness, you're getting fitter, the race predictor will continue to measure in an incorrect way. As I've seen, as my VO2 keeps increasing and it shows more, it consistently continues to be incorrect. Yeah, so um, we'd like to give some positive spin on that, but uh, sorry guys, it's, uh, you know, you can dream believe and achieve and all that but uh, the reality is uh, completely different so uh, a bit like reality tv that's not reality it's all made up yes to make things look really good so let's stick with real life and not reality tv life makes sense thank you all so much for watching really appreciate your time and stick to the very end so very much looking forward to seeing you at the next video thank you love you all bye bye, -bye. <music>